later on. Hey everyone, thanks so much. I'm so excited today. We're gonna to talk about what every agent needs in their tech stack. And you might not even know what a tech stack is. So don't worry, we're gonna chat all about that. Um, quickly before we start, just a little bit about me. If you've tuned in before, this is gonna be a repeat, but for those of the, you that are new here, um, I am all about family and working hard in technology. So it's great fit in terms of working with Real Broker. I'm a mom of three kids, family focused business, meaning that these kids are actually involved. So 14, 11, and eight-year-old all helped me out. Um, I was a business coach with Tom Ferry, and also I'm a Real Academy instructor and top producing agent with my assistant team. So that's who you see down below. We've got Christy, Sarah, and Christine. They do all the client care, marketing, and client concierge. So we're going to talk today about the virtual agent setup. That's what a tech stack is. What are the software things that you're using? Um, we're going to go through a case study. We're going to share. I'm going to do a lot of screen sharing. So if you have questions, please pop them in the chat. Uh, Gina will let me know. I don't have your guys' video on here, so I can't see you because I want to make sure I have access to show you everything. And then I'll also share with you some apps to check out and things maybe you didn't know about apps you already are using or software that you're already using. And then, of course, we'll have a Q&A. But this is meant to be very interactive. So if you have questions throughout, please just pop them in the chat. So a basic tech stack is it includes technology to handle all of your business operations, tracking your numbers for lead generation, finances, tasks and communication with your team. So that's everything on the real estate back end. You have your transaction management. You have client communication. What are you using for client communication? Gone are the days of just my phone or in my head or, you know, my dad is an, an agent. When I first started with him, he, he had a file folder of like offers. Like that's not really how we communicate anymore. So during the current transaction, how do we communicate and post close? I'll share with you what we do there. And then marketing and lead generation. So what technology and softwares are we using to do our marketing and lead generation? Of course, I don't have five hours, so it's going to be a quick session. I will do some breakdowns of each section in future uh, classes. And if you have anything more urgent, just let me know. So I'm just going to go over this real quick. You guys are mostly all real agents here. So we've got the rail app. We've got workplace with real Academy and marketing center. And of course we have chime. So that's our real tech stack and we have access to as tech, um, sorry, real agents, but in terms of my tech stack, in addition to those things, here's the rundown of what I use currently for our business operations. Some of the stuff's brand new to us, actually. Um, every fourth quarter, we kind of look back at what has worked, what hasn't worked, what can we do to make things more efficient. So I'm really excited to be able to kind of dive into some of these with you today. So closer look for YNAP. This is a budget app. I don't know if anybody has troubles manage managing their money, but if you're like most realtors, a lot of us spend all the money that we use sometimes and maybe more. So I started using this just about a, over a year ago and it revolutionized not only my personal finances, but my business finances. So I'm just going to show you this quick video here. You are a wonderful human, perfectly capable. You furniture making, sourdough baking, next generation raising person. Not so much. And living like this is stressful. But don't be so hard on yourself. No one ever taught you how to do this. But we can. It's simple. You need a budget. We all do. Use our proven app to manage your money. Here's how it works. You'll take the money you have and make a plan. Those rainy days, you'll see them coming. When life changes, your budget can too. And before you know it, you'll break the paycheck to paycheck cycle forever. You'll feel less stressed and more confident about your future. And dare we say it, it might just change your life. On average, new budgeters save $600 by month too. And your first 34 days are free. So sign up. You have nothing to lose, except all that stress. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> I just noticed that there's some questions in chat. So that's what we've used. And it actually has, it has gotten us to that point where we're actually ahead and we've planned out and know we have money moving forward. Um, just going to take a quick look at the chat. See if anyone, so if anyone has any questions, please again, put them in the chat. I don't think you guys can see my screen when I have the chat box open here. Okay. So the next app is Zapier or Zapier. I don't know how people say it, but this, if you haven't used it already, 
integrates with a lot of things that you currently use. If you use Gmail, if you use calendars, we use this for so many things. I'm going to show you a quick video and then I'm going to just share my screen with you just to let you know what I have set up. Welcome to Zapier. If you're like us, you've spent a lot of your time handling repetitive but business critical tasks. No one wants to copy and paste data or upload CSVs or send the same email to leads every day. But those are the things that keep a business running. So how is Zapier going to help you with all that? Zapier connects the apps you use every day and automatically moves information between them, doing that work in the background. That's just one way Zapier can do work for you. Head to our app directory and think about your repetitive work you want off your plate, whether it's those annoying CSVs, adding tasks to your to-do list, sending the same email, or adding form responses to a spreadsheet. Whatever your workflow, there's a good chance Zapier can do it for you automatically. Okay, so how does this work? It's kind of like an if this, then that idea. So I'm going to show you, oops. Please let me know if you guys are able to see my screen because I'm trying to get out of this. There you go. Okay. So Zappy, here's my zaps. So you can use, you can have a free access to it with limited zaps. You don't have to pay for the paid version, but it is worth it to automate things. So I'm going to talk to you guys about type form, but if someone fills out a form, I'm going to get a, an email um, right away. So I know people have done that. Another way we can do this, and I'll show you in type form, there's other things with type form. Um, if you use MailChimp, I can actually core, I have this actually zapped with our follow-up boss, which is our CRM. So if they have an investor tag, then they're going on to MailChimp. If they've unsubscribed, we want to make sure that it talks to follow-up boss so that we know also that it's been unsubscribed. So then not, nobody is like logging into the system to check to see if things have been updated. So it's really important if you add someone new to follow-up boss, we're not needing to make sure we add them onto MailChimp. They just talk to each other. Um, when we were using lead pages, you can also have lead pages send information to follow up boss. There's so many different zaps. Um, they literally have a ton of zaps. We can, we've in the past have done when someone fills up a Facebook ad, it can also send information to your CRM. It could send an email to you. There's tons of different options for zaps. You can see kind of the ones that we've used. Oh, this is just so the history. Um, but there's a lot of different apps for zap. Like if you can think about it, they probably have it. Even this, any new Gmail attachments that come, they'll just go straight to your Google Drive. There's so many things that you can use. Um, so you'll have to check that out in further detail. Uh, I'm just gonna jump back to here. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was Mile IQ. Now I used to use this app. You can, it's not a link. You just have to go to your um, app store and you can download Mile IQ. You can download Receipt Bank. These were like game changers for me because like most realtors, I always forget to take pictures of receipts or like you're scrambling at the end of the year trying to figure out your mileage and hope that you recorded everything in your calendar to kind of like re-look and map things out on Google Maps. This auto tracks everything in the back end. It doesn't make your battery drain. Um, and I actually have QuickBooks as an asterisk because if anybody uses QuickBooks, we're incorporated and so we use QuickBooks, they actually now offer something already included in the cost that tracks your mileage and your receipts. So we were able to get rid of those two apps and just use QuickBooks for it. So it's pretty awesome because if you're driving to one appointment to another, you don't even have to turn it on or track it. It literally just tracks it. When you're using MyLiQ or QuickBooks for MyLiQ, you can go on a desktop or you can go onto your app and look through and go, that was work, that was business. It's literally a swipe. So swipe left or right. Um, and the receipt bank, you just take pictures and it goes straight into whatever you're wanting it to um, talk to. So QuickBooks, ours just goes straight into QuickBooks. Now for Slack, we use this to communicate with our clients. And we did this because we wanted streamlined team communication. We did not want to have emails to me, to my assistant, because I have a client assistant who helps show houses. I have an assistant who helps us send out paperwork. Um, and then we also have, you know, spouses talking to each other or, and they're sending Facebook messages or WhatsApp messages and it just gets out of control. So the way that we use um, Slack is, I'll show you how to do this. 
Um, oh, that I did not open. So I'm just going to pull up Slack. And again, I'm pretty cheap. This is free. You don't have to pay for this. We don't pay for Slack at all. Um, so for buyers and sellers, we do things a little bit differently, but I'll show you quickly what we do for a buyer. So when a buyer, we do a buyer consultation, we actually put in, this couple is actually buying and selling. And we put in the criteria of what they're looking for into criteria. And the reason I do this, and I always tell them this, is as we search for homes and they change their minds, we, we have a central location to have that. So we are able to all be on the same page. If they change their mind about what they're looking for, we're not surprised that now the garage is no longer a deal breaker and they are. we can change our criteria. Um, if they're looking for homes, we then post things into links here. So everyone kind of has one location for it. And if I go to an older one here, you'll see that basically that I will put builders and information here, including like the MLS number, and we'll put in, sorry, there's a lot of conversation here because this is the one they bought, the link to the property and the location, like the GeoJet maps, and then any information. We put in info when we look at houses and it just allows people to keep everything straight, shows like their different rankings. And we keep this as a running list. So there's, there's usually more during the buying process. Once they have it narrowed down, then we change it up. So that's what we use Slack for. And we have the concierge that we talk about in terms of helping them um, move forward with their next stuff. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. I'm going really fast because I have a lot to cover. Um, so with- Anadia, I have a question. Oh, yes, yep. So for mile IQ, yeah. um, how does it decipher your mileage between what what is business and what is personal? You decide that. So when you go into the app or on the computer, you can decide if that's business or personal. And it actually does get smart. So if you're doing like the same- if you're going from the office to your house, which I actually don't know if you're allowed to write that part off, but let's say that's always like a business part, you can mark that and it'll forever know that when you're driving this distance, it's business okay, or personal. Yeah. Okay, so Canva is a design tool. So I'm sure a lot of you guys use Canva. How we use it is we use it for thumbnails and B-roll. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's actually video B-roll on Canva. Now we do pay for the paid version. It's well worth its money in, in gold for us because we do a lot of video and this allows us to get access to stock B-roll, stock photos. We use it for social media posts. We make PDF designs for our clients, uh, landing pages. We use it for Facebook ads. We use it to create stuff for our listings. There's so much. Um, again, I'm gonna screen share what we use just to give you guys an inside scoop, obviously. Oh, I better open up another one because we don't want to lose the present. Obviously, I use it for presentations too. Um, so in Canva, look, Gina, now I have lots of things open. You can use folders. And so we have these all organized out so that it's easier to find. Otherwise, it gets a bit much. Um, but you can see we use it for a whole bunch of different things. There's Zoom backgrounds. There's Instagram posts. There's client care, like depending on what we're doing. There's newsletters we used at one point. Um, I'll take a look and I'll show you all your designs. So I use this for my YouTube banners. These are thumbnails. This is clients. I wanna show you guys what we just did. We literally just made some gifts and we did Christmas ornaments. So you can see these go, they just open up here and we just literally, it, this image changed, but we have our new home that shows up for this and it goes on to um, there, we made it into an ornament. So you can literally use this for anything that you wanna make. Um, so we really, really love Canva. Can't say enough about it. Uh, you can also make lead magnets too. So lots of different things that you can do, things move. And yeah, make sure to check out Canva. And again, like you can get the free version again, lots of access, but the paid version is so much easier to, to work with and it's definitely worth it. When Melody, when you reference B-roll, what does that mean? Because I'm on Canva right now. So B-roll is video. So when you're making a video and you're talking, let's say you're talking about grocery shopping, the cost of living and there's groceries cost us much money. 
you can go into, instead of photos, you go to video and I can say groceries or grocery shopping. That's what I'm talking about. So then I can download this onto my computer and upload it into my video, into my video editing software. So now I have generic B-roll about grocery shopping while I'm talking. So it just makes the video more interesting to watch. Does that make sense? Thank you, it does. Okay. All right. So also you can also put YouTube videos. That's how I did this for, for Canva. So if you want to actually put a YouTube specific link, you just go into more and click YouTube. And then you literally just copy and paste the or, or paste the URL from YouTube into here and it'll pull up that. That's how I got those um, videos embedded into the presentation that we just are looking at now. So I don't know how many of you guys have BombBomb, Bomb, but if you don't know what BombBomb Bomb is, it is a video software that you can send out with emails. It compresses it so it's not, you know, you don't film a video on your phone and send it out and super, it blocks it up or it can't send it out because it's too big. Some things I, I found out there's some things you didn't know you could do. Even I didn't even know I could do. We have used it for sending out messages to clients after we've met with them to follow up. Video just really stands out. Even when we present offers, I will talk to a client or sorry, I've talked to the agent and present the offer on video because a lot of times we don't do face-to-face -face anymore, haven't for a long time. And talking on the phone is good, but it's not the same. So I always do a video um, presentation of an offer and I always get compliments all the time on it. I do think that actually helps your client with that as well. Um, so let's just go into this. It says that you can get a Chrome extension, which we did. You can actually do screen records. So if you're doing a CMA and you want to record your screen and walk through a CMA with your client, you can email that to them once a year, maybe, maybe right before spring market to see who's actually interested in. Everyone always is interested in their house value, but then you can kind of run that through. You can also have it connected to your Gmail. So if you're on your Gmail, you don't have to log into BombBomb Bomb to send a video. You just go from within your Gmail and hit record and it will record a message and it just send. So that's how I would do that for a realtors. Um, and just sending out video, your, the app also works for that as well. The inbox add-on I just talked about with Gmail and Outlook it works for. And I don't know what snippets was, sorry. And then scheduling, you can actually schedule through BombBomb Bomb. Or you can also do this through, through Gmail as well. If you know someone's birthday, so you can sit down for time management sake and like pump out all your happy birthdays for the next three months or six months and then schedule them. So then it just comes out on that day and time. Um, the mobile app I kind of talked about earlier, they have access to all of your filmed videos will be on there. So if you have a generic one that you filmed and you want to send it out through text, you can do that. You can share it on social media. I talked about the screen recorder. There's lists, so you can actually segment for retargeting. We can, it's a little bit more complicated than why we have time today. There's lead capture, so there's landing pages. They have templates that you can use. They have integrations. So here's a, a snapshot of all the integrations that you can use with BombBomb, Bomb, including if you're, again, the CRM that we use as follow-up boss, it also integrates with that as well. Trello is a must-have for our business. We use this Every, this is a way that my brain can stay focused because I always get detracted and then I'm like, well, what was I working on again? So Trello is your task to do. It's a Kanban style and I'll show you um, what how we use it. So there's a desktop version and there's also a um, app version on your computer. So I have, a, this is my board. This is where I usually live to do today, doing done. So when I'm doing something like, for example, teaching the real academy, I can put in doing. So now my assistants who have access to this can see what I'm doing. When I'm finished something, I can just put it into done. You can see that her face is on here. That means she's following that card. So you can tag your assistants. You can tag the team. I can look and see like what she is working on. I can see what my um, anybody's working on is here. So you can see like Christy is my assistant and this is the stuff she's working on right now. This is the done. So it's a good way to track tasks and monitor things. The other thing I use it for is planning out my YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel has lots of videos. And so we've got January, February, March, we've got everything planned, but then you, we have little labels here that kind of let you know, is it filmed? Does it need to be edited? Where is it at? So then that way the team knows what's going on because my marketing assistant can help with the script writing. 
Um, then she knows I filmed it. So now once it's, once it's done editing, my 14 year old helps me edit these videos. So once he's done editing, then she's going in and finishing up everything on YouTube. So it's again, a place for collaboration and it really helps to make sure we see that. Um, I like, I'm a visual person and I wanna simplify things. So that's the biggest reason why we use this. It's, it's so easy. I have an app on my phone as well. So that honestly, this happens a lot at night. I'm like, try not to work. And I think of something, but if I don't write it down, it's, I'm going to forget it. So I pull up my app, type it into under to do today. And then I can not think about it till the next day. And then I can go through all of my tasks or things I thought up. I'll put them in my assistance board as well. So they remember and maybe ask me what it is. Every time you tag someone, it can also notify them. You see the notification buttons here. It has all that stuff. All right. Does anyone have any questions about Trello? I'm trying to find my Canva again. Okay. So, oh, we're about to go into high notes. So I am going to show you this video and then I'm going to show you how we use it. We've all been there. You spend hours perfecting your listing presentation, formatting it so it not only looks good, but is light enough to send out as an email attachment. You hit send and... Enter HighNote, the closing platform designed by real estate legend Mark Choi, reinventing the pitch and presentation process for today's top agents. Easily create and personalize jaw-dropping presentations that position you as the future forward agent clients want to work with. The best part? Deal closing analytics. If a lead goes dark, find out if they saw your presentation or simply ignored it. Find out what your prospects need to close the deal. Know when your presentations are opened and explored so you can follow up with the right information at the right time, unlike a composition. One agent closed nine of their last 10 listings of high note. Another closed a $2 million listing without ever meeting in person, while yet another helped their buyer stand out in a crowded market. Next time you need to nail the presentation and close the deal, use High Note. All right, so if you're curious what it looks like because you can't access it, when you go in to sign up, you have to wait, you're on a waiting list. So let me show you what it looks like on our side and what we've used it for. Um, if I can find the tab, this is probably why everyone laughs at multiple tabs. Okay, so we use it in multiple ways. Um, we have this one is for time to pack. So this is when, you know, it's client communication. So we used to send out a bunch of emails saying, here's a PDF, here's what you, you should expect to do next, blah, blah, blah. We made this high note presentation and we can personalize it. So we change it to have their name on it. Um, it has all the information, but it looks so much nicer than it would if you were to get a whole bunch of emails. Our PDF that we used to send now is in this link. The form that they need to use is in this link. Um, about your mail, all this stuff is all in here. We'll put things about their neighborhood, pizza, groceries. It's, this is stuff that we offer as services. And so that's one presentation. I have also done one where we made an offer um, and that also helps as well. So you can see, you can put the house information, you can put the video. Oh, this is the one that we have as a template. So you can save templates, but I did do one right here. So this one was actually, I think we actually got the house for less money than maybe she would have normally let it go for because of just all the work that we put into this presentation. This is a location close to where the house is. I put, I have this address to the agent, of course, not to the seller, but then the purchase contract is here. So you can click on the possession date accommodation. So I wrote a story about like why my clients and what they were willing to do to accommodate the client's possession, talked about the concerns they had, city assessed values, and showed her the due diligence we did to come up with the price. Now, the great thing about this is that even though my client didn't get a response for about, took a while because there was an older lady that had to talk to a whole bunch of family members and there was a medical emergency. So what I could do is I clicked in analytics and I could see who and when they were going through it. So I could see that she checked out this three times, spent 24 minutes on it, and she checked out these assets. Um, the first time she looked at it, she only spent like two minutes and she looked at this. So it was really cool because I could still give my clients 
access. Now I also added them so they could see also what I have done so they could see it. And I know that they never looked at it because my analytics show that they've actually never even opened the link. So this is an awesome way to, to see what's happening. If you are using this for people to fill things out and they maybe started it, but didn't finish, you can see here what they've clicked and what they've been looking at. So you can kind of do some good follow-up that way. Does anyone have questions about high note? You know, that's a lot. Okay, so let's go back to type form. This is another favorite. So high notes new to us that we just started using and type forms another one and I'll show you how this one works. I do want to understand how we build a meaningful brand. Instead of getting people to search for online surveys, how do I get 10 times as many people to search for type form? I think that it's more important in, rather than building a brand, being a brand way less content marketing centric and a lot more. How do we get people excited about this conversation? It's okay to be one thing and be boldly for that thing and then, and then change your mind. I wish I could just you know, tell the whole world this is the takeaway. Like be more yourself. So I'm going to show you what this means, like what type form is. I was inspired by a talk that I heard from a mortgage broker that talked about being more meaningful with their client experiences. And so learning more about the client so that you can cater to them. So if you know that they really like, um, he used the example of wine versus I think brandy, I don't drink, sorry. So something that was not wine um, and he had a tasting, instead of inviting him to a wine tasting, he invited him to a tasting specific to like brandy, for example. That guy was so appreciative that he didn't get a wine tasting invite. I know it sounds kind of funny, but you know, as real estate agents, we want to up our game. This is a really good way to up our game. And it's a good way to find out information from clients without awkwardly asking. Um, so what I've done is I've used this to, I find out information when they're booking an appointment with me as a buyer or a seller. Um, we use Typeform also for landing pages instead as well, and also a concierge and giving feedback. Now I'm going to show you if they're looking for a home, there's, there's a lot of um, analytics that come with this as well. There's logic. So I'm going to quickly walk you through, if you're looking to buy a home, I send this link to them through email or text, and you just you can customize everything here and you get one thing at a time. So I'm going through all this and I'm just typing in all the information. It's super uh, mobile friendly as well. And I'm just gonna fill it out just so you can see what it all looks like. So here, we would like to send cool stuff on occasion. What's the best address to send during the day? You might think this is crazy, but I did have a YouTube lead yesterday, fill this out and she gave me her address. So, and it was real. <laughs> um, so it's actually quite handy to get this information. How did you initially hear about us? So depending on what you choose, we have logic that will change it in terms of the response. If I hit, I'm already a client or referral, the referral one says, great, who is the, who did, we want to say thank you. Who was it that referred? So you can imagine all this information you can get before you actually meet with a client is very helpful. Um, if I have online search or YouTube, when on my selling side, I literally talk of and vet out people who are looking for discounts because I'm, we don't work with that. So it actually says, are you sure you want to work with us? And we go through a whole process there. I'm just going to quickly go through this. Um, so here's how can we know about what, what are you doing for moving? So let's say the house is too big. Um, what's on your wish list? There's a few things. Again, obviously you're going to talk about that more in the meeting, but this is kind of nice for you to see. And they can fill out a whole bunch of information. So you can see here, it's also, here's where I love where you can find this information out. What do you like? And it's funny, it's two things that make you happy. They have no idea why you're doing this, but now you have this in your reserve for you can imagine how many gifts you can do, right? And then they can, they don't have to answer these ones, but I have these in here to again, help us with our gifting and making sure that things are more meaningful. If they haven't already booked an appointment with me, it will then take you to a Calendly link that's integrated and they can book in my calendar. So that's kind of like the gist of Typeform. 
And I believe, oh, I have a few more things. I'm almost done, guys. Sorry, it always takes longer than I think. Cardly is a um, automated app program that you can send out your birthday cards, your house anniversary cards. Uh, for sake of time, I'm just going to skip over the video, but check them out. They're another option. I know that you have sent out cards in the States as well, but in Canada, we're trying to find something that was a little bit more cost effective. This is an app that you can use. One of my colleagues talked about it. You can actually see where the sun is in the house because some people are very specific on where the sun is. Now, oops, InShot is the last one I wanted to show you guys. And because we don't have time, um, maybe what we'll do is just quickly watch the video and then we'll go straight into Q&A after this. All right, so I am at the Q&A section. So if you have any question and answer, please pop them into the chat. I know I covered like a ton of information, so. You guys, did you guys, have you used any of these things? What are some things that you might think of um, implementing in your business? Did you ever look at Asana versus Trello? Yeah, um, actually, one of our video editors uses Asana to communicate with us. It's a bit more complicated, and I wanted something simple. Mm -hmm. So I do think it serves a good purpose because it works well for um, communicating with our video editing team. But for us, Trello was just simpler to use. Okay. Yeah. No. Um, which one is best to get lead? Um, can you elaborate maybe on what you're meaning about that? Not sure I understand the question. And then Jonathan, love high note. Oh, so you're using it too. Awesome. Um, Calendly, InShot, and Canva. So which one is the best to get a lead for social media? Um, these software programs are just means to help you implement your business. So if you have a lead generating strategy that you, you need to use these things, then that's what you do. But these are not actual like lead generating on their own, you have to be the brains behind it if you're doing that. So for example, if I'm using Canva to do a Facebook ad, I'm just creating the ad itself and then putting it onto Facebook. It's not necessarily giving me a lead unless I'm, I have a specific strategy for it. Gina, does anyone have any questions on the chat, on the Facebook market or workplace? Let me try that again. No, um, not at this moment, but I put all the links out there. Awesome, thank for you. For everything. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can, yeah, you can pop onto, my socials are there. And then I also have a YouTube channel that I put some tutorials on. So I started it earlier, like last year. It's called the Canadian Tech Savvy Agent and it has little how-tos. Disclaimer, it hasn't been updated for a while. So we are putting some you have more the link? video. Yeah. Can you put um, the link in chat? It's literally just. Awesome. No way I don't type it wrong. <laughs> I've typed it in wrong before. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, to, just to wrap up, what is one thing you guys are going to look into? Maybe not use it, but what are you going to look into? I'd love to see. Um, if today was helpful for you guys at all. Trello. Awesome. Yeah, Trello is a, there's so many things about Trello, like you can, there's so many automations and power-ups you can use in Trello beyond the basics. So like if you have reoccurring tasks, for example, checking with my assistant or doing lead generation time to make sure it's slotted out, I can have that task come up every single day at 8 a.m. if I wanted. I don't have to keep typing it every day. Awesome. I set up a Trello, but then after talking to I think Gina, told me to look into Asana and ClickUp. 
Um, and I'm actually going to talk to the Macy's, Tim and Pawn about um, Asana, because I think they use that too for the, the form collector thing you have, yeah. uh, type form. Asana yeah. does that as well, I think. So it kind of integrates it all into one, but I don't know. Um, I'm supposed to sit down with them and see how they use it all. But yeah. I already set up Trello um, also. Can you still see my screen? Oops. Mm -hmm. What yes. do you guys? Oh, hold on. I'm going to show you my the the version I have of Asana just to give you an idea. Um, oops. Click so up. I know you can make it look like Trello with the boards. So I'm kind of looking at click click up versus Asana right now. Oh, okay. Because you can yeah. make it look like Trello. Not working. Yeah, I didn't look into. Oh, I don't know why it's not working for me now. Of course. <laughs> Um, I just like to keep it more simple and we, we don't use just Trello, right? Like we have our follow-up boss that we use our systems, um, open to close as a transaction management system that my assistant uses. So we do use a lot of things. I think if people are using it for a little bit more in depth, I know that Trello has, I've also seen people use Trello for showing requests. We used to do showing feedback on Trello to track that. Um, and we also used to have a board for each listing and track like all the marketing that was being done on it and where the progress was on each listing. So I just found it was like, the easiest thing to implement. And I didn't want to waste a ton of time learning. Like open to close took us two and a half months to set up. It was very painful. I wanted to drop out many times, but I knew that the end game was going to automate so many things for us that it was, I wanted to make sure I stayed with that. Question. Oh, God, yep. With any of these systems, like, so I've got Trello, but we're not really using it, or Asana or Monday.com, Monday or whatever. Do any of these, do these systems notify you when your assistants go in and make changes or add something, or do you have to go and look at it every time to see where people are at? You can put yourself on that cart, like, because you might not want to know all the things that they're doing. So you could put your yourself onto that card and it'll notify you every time that card gets moved. If it's like being worked on, if it's been added to, it'll notify you right away. Another alternative too, is they can tag you in the card. Uh -huh. So they can ask you that question. So then that way I can keep track of the conversation in one card instead of having like 500 conversations. I'm like, did she already answer me about this? And then it's all in one space. So I'll show you here. I think it's just but yeah, it's personal preference. Like Jonathan said that they're both um, free. Like there's free version, sorry. We actually don't pay for ours. Ours is free. We have kept, like some power-ups that we use. Um, but if you look here, I think here. So my, my middle child is Seth. I tagged him in it. So he gets notified and then it, it gives them information on no, knowing what to do. Yeah, my kids are on here. <laughs> Told you they work for me. <laughs> Um, and then even here, like we have check-ins, we have checklists that we can keep as a normal daily checklist. Oh, the one thing I was forgot to show you guys on the YouTube planning board, there's a calendar pop power up. So when I click calendar, it actually shows me all of my, um, calendar, like all the cards in calendar form. Why is it not showing me now? And is that calendar in Trello? Yeah. Yeah. This is just for, it's me. It's, and it has to have due dates. So that's, we just did this. So then that's probably why it's not working. See how there's no due dates on here. It won't show up on the calendar unless there's due dates on there. So once there's due dates, it pops up. Sorry. Some, someone said something. No, oh, I thought I heard somebody unmute themselves. Um, but focus. Pardon me. No, let's be feedback. <laughs> but yeah, like if you have a date on here, it'll actually pop up in the calendar. So again, me being visual, I want to see what is coming on. We at one point we're doing all of our social media posts that way too. Um, but yeah. Here in the US, we pay our kids to work. Yep, we sure can. And that's exactly why my kids are earning their keep. The 14-year-old has to make enough money for university soon. <laughs> And the 11 year old works at the 11 year old is more detail oriented. So he does all my CRM and detail stuff. And then the older one and the younger one are creative. So they're all working. They're on my website. They're on my Chime website that we just set up. Chime was, by the way, so easy to set up. We're not using it for the CRM side, but we're using it for um, the website side. And 
they haven't figured out how to mask it yet, but I was able to put a video in the background, which is really cool. And this took me maybe 15 minutes to set up. Um, and then I have my YouTube videos. I, they allow you to kind of put some videos in. So I chose my top six and I picked a community and then this is my team. So you can fill all this stuff out. It was so easy. And then we have the blogs that we started. So we just got it because we're in Canada here and we just got access to Chime, I think a month ago. Um, so it was really easy. And I just simplified everything up here. So if nobody else has any more questions, thank you so much for joining us today. And next month, I'm going to be talking about YouTuber agent. So if you want to tune into that, I'm going to talk about the simplified non-produced YouTube videos, because I'll show you how this thing got me over 2000 subscribers and this year, 14 uh, closed deals. So happy to share a duplicatable thing. So thanks so much, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>